Well, hello again, human beings from the planet Earth. Happy Wednesday. Uh, I just got some information in that I wanted to share with you. This was uh, from 1948 Kitty YouTube channel. I'll link you to that below. But 30 chilling facts proving we're the people under attack in an undeclared war with the Rothschild League of Bankers. And there's 30 of these, and I know you're not going to read them. So I thought, uh, although my videos are usually short ones, I'm going to go ahead and read this stuff to you because this is just ridiculous. You people need to wake up. Well, probably not you people because you're waking up now. You're listening, you're looking, you're researching. you got to share this information. you got to start slapping people. That's it. You got, you're going to have to piss people off. There's n no more Mr. Nice Guy. Anyway, enough about me. Number one, the media is grossly censoring the extent of the devastation in the Gulf. The poisons, oil, and chemical dispersant corrects it, are destined to spread globally, but honest reporting is restricted and independent investigators are being arrested. The censorship is a sure sign of fascism, not freedom or democracy. In this way, the media, financially directed by leading investment bankers cited below, accomplices uh, this global poisoning or omnicide, Good Lord. Number two, the news and network programming is mind-controlling propaganda issued by the partners in the Rothschild League of Banks, including Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, UBS, the direct BP, Transocean, Halliburton, the cleanup capitalists, corrects suppliers, even the trailers used by cleanup crews, through co-investors heavily represented in the Partnership for New York City, founded by David Rockefeller, and charted by the royal family of England. All together, these partners wield the most formidable economic power in world history. Number three, ongoing worsening environmental pollution has been a primary objective of these Rothschild League financiers since at least the 1960s, according to their leaked economic agenda, destroying the environment, thus creating new global threats for remediation markets and emergency management is unconscionable, but very real. This has become a viable alternative to traditional warfare securing profitable population control through crisis capitalism. Number four, the Gulf oil catastrophe reflects this one of three major financially sustaining war substitutes. Currently less urgent than environmental destruction is space-based threats, solar flares, alien menaces, colliding asteroids. The third and least apparent profitable war substitute is petrochemical, pharmaceutical enslavement. All three of these incentives and objectives for the global governance, emergency preparedness, and profitable military and homeland security responses carries the weight of considerable actual sacrifice of life. Good Lord. Number five, the propaganda policy most effectively in the Gulf in all crises to blame illusory villains to create sham debates. When Obama is blamed for the oil crisis, for instance, the accident faults Democrats. When Halliburton is blamed, the Republicans feel faulted. This division diversion suckers masses of idiots, discredits the media's intelligent and shames people who still claim we have a free and responsible press. Number six, Deepwater Horizon, Mississippi Canyon 252 oil rig that exploded is the property of Transocean, not British Petroleum. And both companies are financially directed by Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, and UBS investment bankers, all operating in Rothschild League of Banks. Coinc number seven, coincidentally or demonically, the oil rig's failed commentation job exploded on Hitler's birthday just in time to poison Earth Day 2010. Thanks to Transocean's contractor, the infamous Dick Cheney, George Bush associated Halliburton Company allied with Homeland. Homeland Security. Number eight, Halliburton officials admit knowing their cementation job was likely to explode just when it did, according to congressional testimony. Number nine, Goldman Sachs officials likewise knew the rig was likely to explode when it did. They bet millions of dollars on this event only days before it happened. Lloyd Blankfein, CEO of uh, 
Goldman Sachs directed 44% or 4.6 million shares of BP stock to be dumped three weeks before the explosion. Number 10, not surprisingly, Transocean was merged into its current corporate state by Goldman Sachs. Number 11, David Sidwell, Sidwell, Risk Committee Chairman of UBS, the wealthiest Swiss bank uh, and the world's largest wealth manager, also dumped BP stocks massively. 99% of the bank holdings are 2.1 million shares, as did Wachovia Wells Fargo. Number 12, BP Oil CEO Tony Hayward sold one-third of his BP stock, 223,288 shares on March 17th, the month before the explosion. Number 13, just prior to 9-11, you may recall Goldman Sachs did the same with airline stocks, and before the Gulf catastrophe, Goldman Sachs shorted mortgage company stocks, fueling real estate collapse. Number 14, the management boards of the Eurex Stock Exchange and the executive board of German Eurex Clearing AG decided April 14, 2010 to introduce an equity option sh of sh on shares of Transocean LTD effective on the day of the explosion, April 20, 2010. This gave insider traders a full day to dump their unsecured stock in Transocean at its highest price possible before the rest of Wall Street responded to the explosion. Then the crisis capitalists were able to reinvest their funds securing higher price value. These officials pub published zero reason for Transocean's new equity option program that encouraged banking criminals to use protective puts to make millions. In other words, by paying a relatively small premium compared to the soon-to-be-plunging market value of Transocean stock, the Rothschild leagues knew no matter how far the stock dropped, it could be sold at the original stock price, also called the put option, any time before April 20, 2012. This additionally evidences premeditated murder and the financial motives of the Swiss-German banking chiefs influencing Europe's most active stock exchanges. These inside traders and industrial saboteurs financially controlling Transocean, Halliburton, and BP committed the greatest environmental crime of all time, with obvious plans to profit from the mass murdering of people and the destruction of the Gulf. Number 15. This was how, man, uh, how money was made from the obvious sabotage. After UBS told us 2.1 million shares of BP prior to the explosion, the put option policy on BP stock was similarly exercised when UBS brought back 8.6 million BP shares by June 7th. Number 16, Transocean Vice President of Marketing Terry Bono met UBS officials on May 27, 2010, according to a heavily censored Thompson Routers report and trans transcript. The ultra deep water market will start to pick up longer term, Bono encouraged banking officials. Number 17, so within weeks of the explosion of the Rothschild League of Investment Bankers were yelling buy, 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 BP stock, stating the cost for cleanup were minuscule compared to what their investments and company profits would earn. This quote detailed the BP 18, this quote detailed the BP banking stock jocks plot buying shares today while waiting, writing $55 calls and puts for the January 2012 expiration allows for an outstanding cash-on-cash -cash return if BP merely bounces back by 14% over the next 21 months. In a best case, you'll net 98% total returns on the actual cash outlay, assuring you write the puts against paid-up marginable equity already held in your margin-type account. Number 19, much like instantly manufactured equity investment options created by Transocean right before the explosion, BP's stock insurance plan secured ongoing devastation in the Gulf with financial promise. In the worst case scenario, you'll end up with twice the number of BP ADRs at an average cost of 42.64 or less, stock gurus promoted. That's lower than the annual lows for BP during the entire period of 2004 right through 2007. You know what, I've had enough of reading this bullshit. If you sheep aren't awake by now, you never will be. You probably don't care anyway. Uh, I'm going to link you to this post. You can go on and read the rest of it. I've heard enough. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted at the lack of action among the people that say they're awake. And uh, you better hold on to your asses because 2012 is here and we're in for a long, hard ride. <laughs>